A very good morning to my lecturer, Dr. Maman. I'm Nelson Liao and my teammates, Ferdinand Lawai, Rohil and Muhammad Daniel. We will be presenting on the topic called Application of Inverted Acoustic Impedance and Shear Impedance in Determining Reservoir Properties. So for my part, I'll be presenting on introduction, problem statement and objective, followed by Daniel we will be presenting on methodology and conclusion. Rohil will be presenting on results and lastly, Ferdinand will be presenting on discussion. So I'll start with introduction. Reservoir analysis describes the reservoir characters qualitatively and quantitatively using seismic and well data. The process includes delineation, description and reservoir monitoring. Reservoir delineation accounts for the reservoir geometry, including the force and phases changes which can affect the reservoir production performance. Reservoir description defines the reservoir physical properties such as the porosity, permeability, water saturation and pore fluid. Seismic inversion involves creating subsurface geological model using seismic data as input and well data as control. The inversion for reservoir analysis reads between the lines or between reflecting interfaces to produce detailed models of rock properties. Acoustic impedance, in short called AI, volume, has many advantages for reservoir delineation and description because it, it is obtained by integrating data and is closely related to rock properties. The ultimate goal of seismic inversion procedure shows in this co context of reservoir analysis is to provide models not only for acoustic impedance but also for other relevant physical properties such as porosity, poison ratio and VP over VS ratio around the well. Usually at those well locations, we have measurements that give us a good idea of the elastic and physical properties of the subsurface rocks, such as lithology, porosity and density. Inversion replaces the seismic signature by a blocky response corresponding to acoustic and or elastic impedance layering. It fascinates the interpretation of meaningful geological and petrophysical boundaries in subsurface. Inversion increases the resolution of conventional seismic in many cases and puts the study of reservoir parameters at a different level. The natural logarithm of shared impedance has a linear relationship with the natural logarithm of acoustic impedance. While the relationship uses the Gartner equation shows after reformulation of the Gartner relation, it is understandable that the natural logarithm of density has a linear relationship with the natural logarithm of acoustic impedance. The inversion methods are either deterministic or probabilistic, and the approach can be post and or pre stack Inversion schemes generally uses migrated time data as basic input. The purpose of simultaneous inversion is to invert pre stack common depth point in short course CDP, gathers to determine compression impedance, shear impedance, and density. Inversion scheme generally use migrated time data as basic input. Pre-stack inversion can be used to get more information than post-stack inversion. Post-stack inversion is purely acoustic because there is no mode conversion at normal incidence. Therefore, P wave impedance is the only information that can be estimated from post-stack inversion of P wave data. In full post-stack inversion of P wave data, it shows both the low and high frequency components of the P wave acoustic impedance can be extracted from the seismic data. The two-step process of reflectivity estimation followed by model-based inversion is now commonly replaced by one-step simultaneous pre-stack inversion algorithms deriving acoustic impedance and shear impedance directly. Once acoustic impedance and shear impedance volumes have been created, they can be easily manipulated to create other useful volumes such as P-wave velocity to S-wave velocity ratio. The next goes to problem statement. The pro problem statement shows the study plays as the role to discover the advantages and limitations of recovering petrophysical parameters based on reservoir properties using simultaneous pre-stack inversion, in short called SPSI. For the enhancement of pre-stack seismic data quality, some seismic data preconditioning 
flow chart have been applied on pre-stack data. The wavelet spectral analysis has been performed after conditioning the data with different techniques like ABO, simultaneous inversion, ABO analysis, and density inversion have been applied. The objective of the topic shows it is to predict subsurface reservoir properties for optimal reservoir heterogeneity description. Next, to study acoustic impedance inversion and cross plot analysis of reservoir properties, followed by or the comparing the acoustic impedance slice and seismic attribute maps at the target reservoir zones reveal high reflection amplitudes, or known as the bright spots. Lastly, is to determine K, KC, M, and MC, which are respectively show the slope of natural logarithm of shear impedance against the natural logarithm of acoustic impedance. The intercept of the natural logarithm of shear impedance against the natural logarithm of acoustic impedance. Next, the slope of the natural logarithm of density against the natural logarithm of acoustic impedance. And lastly, on the intercept of the natural logarithm of shear impedance against the natural logarithm of acoustic impedance. That's all for my part, and I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you, Nelson. Uh, I would like to proceed with methodology. The first step is compute the best fit field that, that best shape the well log reflection coefficients to the input seismic data at specific well locations. It is the status for wavelet analysis and it is compulsory for seismic inversion process. Since some differences were observed in the wavelet in terms of the side loads, amplitude and phase, it was decided to calculate an average wavelet for seismic inversion purpose. The average wavelet was characterized by an envelope center around zero, tail taper off to zero and low order side loads. It has a smooth amplitude spectrum without notches and flat near zero phase spectrum within the seismic bandwidth. The next step is create a model framework to represent the structural geometry of the field. Next, interpolate and extrapolate impedance from the wells with the guidance of a model framework that has been created to create a solid model of Earth. The Earth model provides low frequency end of the final model. The next step is seismic inversion, which is convolved estimated wavelet and sparse reflection coefficient series. In this case study, it was inverted by using Jason Geoscience Workbench JGW constraint sparse pi inversion algorithm, CSSI. During seismic inversion, the constraints are, are imposed to find the best geological and geophysical solution. After that, after that, we have to minimize an objective cost function that contains multiple terms called misfit function. Its purpose to determine inverted inverse acoustic impedance AI and inverse shear impedance FI. And last of foremost, merge the solid model and sparse part inversion SSI, aka SSI. In this process, the high vertical resolution of the well data and the high spatial resolution of the 3D seismic data were combined to give a seismically constrained high resolution impedance volume, which gives a better estimation of the interwell reservoir properties. It was initially tested on several test lines before generating the final volume covering the entire area of interest. On the left side of the picture, is the well to seismic type and correlation panel for K10 well showing great match between seismic traces and adjacent, and adjacent, synthet and adjacent synthetic seismogram display in wiggle traces. You can see the red line here. It matches each other. 
That's my anesthetic. On the right side, it's a derived average wavelet computed from the, the base wavelet that used for seismic inversion. On the left side is that the frequency spectrum showing seismic data has a frequency gap of 0 to 7 hertz. As you can see there, the upper part is uh, low frequency, which is 7 hertz, while the bottom part is high frequency, which is 47 hertz. On the right side is traverse of low frequency model through Cree well showing very good mesh at the wells, both qualitatively and quantitatively. You can see this picture. Ah, it is well correlated. Yeah, I think that's all from me for now. Now I pass the floor to Rohit. Please welcome. Thank you, Daniel. Hello, my name is Rohil Sudhiramakunasega, and I will be presenting on some of the case studies that, that showcase the application of inverted impedances in determining reservoir properties. Before we begin, what are the reservoir properties interested by geologists in the oil and gas industry? As you can see on the screen, here are some of the examples of reservoir properties. However, in this video, we will be covering mainly porosity and fluid saturation. Before we jump into determining the reservoir properties, we have to first assess the extent of our reservoir, where in this case is represented by the net to gross. This is a study conducted in the deep offshore of Niger Delta, which is made up of channelized turbidized sandstones. The aim of this study was the derivation of robust estimates of net sand distribution and its impact on the modeling reservoir parameters and consequent estimations of in-place volumes, which in this case may represent volumetric ass assessment uh, estimation. This was done using simultaneous inverse algorithm of five offset angle seismic substacks. Rock physics analysis was carried out to discriminate lithologies and fluids using elastic logs. Rock properties derived from well logs were analyzed using cross plots between the AI and, sorry, AI is in acoustic impedance and shear impedance. As you can see in the graph, there is a clear distinction between the sand and shear where the sand is represented by the top line and the shale is represented by the shale line. So, okay. so this discrimination of shale and clean sand allowed for the derivation of the net to growth property from the inverted impedance volumes. In this study, the, the cutoff for clean sand is zero. The volume of shale for, to categorize it as clean sand is sand containing less than 15% shale. Okay. The cleanest sand plots the cleanest sand plots away from the shale, which means that the distance between the sand data plot and the shale is a function of sand quality. By plotting the net to gross of 0 to 1, 0 and 1, net to gross volumes were calculated by integrating the P impedance as impedance and S impedance, as you can see in the equation on the top. Okay. This diagram shows the net to gross model overlain with the well net to gross. This net to gross model represents the seismic well net, the seismic net to gross, which has been overlain with the well net to gross. Okay. According to this, based on this diagram, they can observe that there is a good agreement between the seismic net to gross and the well net to gross. The net sand thickness was computed from the gross bodies using this net to gross volume and the result converted from thickness in time to thickness in feet we are a velocity model okay. the actual net sand thickness versus the predicted net sand were plotted for can be reservoir which is the reservoir we were studying in this case study there is a good agreement that exists between the predicted net sand thickness and the actual net sand thickness which means that this result has a very good accuracy that means there is low errors okay now let us move on to the discussion. Okay, from this study, we can see that simultaneous seismic inversion of multi-angle stacks is capable of producing a robust estimate of net 
sand distribution in the Kanbi Reservoir. There is a good agreement between the seismic net to gross and well net to gross, as stated earlier. Moreover, there is a good agreement between the predicted net sand thickness and the actual net sand thickness. This has enabled the quantification of spatially driven, well controlled range of uncertainties in the volumetric calculation, as stated earlier. Net to gross model provided better and improved understanding of reservoir continuity, sand presence, quality, and potential drilling location, which is an integral part in the exploration and production uh, phases in oil and gas. Okay, that is all for the inverted uh, for the application of inverted impedances in lithology discrimination. Now let us move to the application of inverted impedances, which is the fluid discrimination. As you know, reservoir rocks are typically characterized by their high porosities and permeabilities. Okay. But those high porosities can be filled by other fluids, by fluids other than hydrocarbons, such as water. Okay. Therefore, it is important to distinguish hydrocarbon bearing sandstones and brine saturated sandstones, which brings us to the following case study. This is another case study that was conducted in the Niger Delta at the Arcos field. Okay. This study aims to distinguish sandstone reservoir rocks composed of different sat fluid saturations, such as stated area, between hydrocarbon and brine, okay, and other fluids in between. Unlike the first case, this inversion involves post-stack inversion, which is different. In the previous case study, we the study in, involved the usage of pre-stack inversion, where in this study we use post-stack inversion. Therefore, the output parameters are different, as in common sense. In this study, the P impedance and the ratio between the two, apologies, the ratio between the P wave and the S wave velocities are used. Okay. This study focuses on two sandstone reservoirs located at different depths. They are recognized as sand one and sand two. The cross plot between v, the VP VS ratio against the P impedance allowed for the distinguishing of reservoirs into four different zones. Namely, the gas zone, the oil zone, the brine zone, and shale zone. Although this study focuses on the fluid discrimination, it in the in the real study it focuses on both lithology and fluid discrimination. But in our case, we'll be focusing on the fluid discrimination. So in this case, you can see that we are able to distinguish in this study using the P impedance and the VPVS, the cross plot between these two studies. We are able to determine the gas zone, oil zone, and brine zones. Although this plot involves both VPVS and acoustic impedance, a better discrimination is observed in the acoustic impedance axis, meaning that there is, there is a higher discrimination between different fluid types in the sandstone with in the acoustic impedance axis. As you can see in the slide, that within the x-axis, there is a bigger separation between two fluids compared to the y-axis, meaning that there's many overlapping. There are many different fluids overlap with each other in the y-axis, so therefore, the acoustic impedance serve, appears to be a better discriminate uh, serves as a better discrimination discriminator of fluids, okay, compared to the VPVS ratio. Okay. For this study, two horizons were picked in the seismic volume and were used to generate slices. The p impedances the p impedance were generated for sand one and sand two centered at 2050 milliseconds and 2141 milliseconds window respectively p impedance as you know p impedance is very sensitive to lithology and can fairly discriminate hydrocarbon charged sand from brine sand okay in this figure you can see it is stated that very low values of acoustic impedance were observed to the northern part of the field and high acoustic impedances are observed in the uh, other parts of the field. OK, so what does this mean? So that will be explained in the next slide, which is the discussion. OK, so in discussion, it is seen that P as stated earlier, P impedance serves as a good indicator of, lit of uh, to discriminate lithology and fluids. And as stated earlier, the low acoustic impedance values in the northern area of the field is indicating a uh, indicates hydrocarbon saturated sands and the high acoustic impedance values indicate possible depleted zones that uh, I means sandstones with uh, probably that have been depleted of hydrocarbon okay what are the advantages of knowing this this reduces the risk of drilling wells and the identify uh, the risk of drilling dry wells and the identification of new prospects and serves as an 
effective economic and decision making tool. Okay, that is all for the fluid discrimination. Now let us move into the final case study. This final case study involves a study conducted in the Kakawa field in onshore Niger Delta. This study involves the prediction of porosity from inverted acoustic impedance. Inverted volumes of the band past and full band acoustic, acoustic, acoustic impedances were generated and examined in, track, in the track and bin directions and arbitrary traverses intersecting the key wells in this study where in this case, this study focuses on three wells, which is the K10, K1, and K2, okay? Now, I would like to pass the floor to Ferdinand to discuss the results obtained from the generated data. Thank you. So we will be discussing an, uh, a study based on the acoustic impedance inversion for porosity and reservoir quality prediction in Kakawa field on shore Nigel Delta which is written by Magnus et al. in 2020. Specifically, an application of new methodology that allows interpreters to obtain porosity distribution from post-stack 3D seismic amplitude data using measured density and sonic well of data as constraints is presented here. 3D acoustic impedance model was calculated from seismic reflection amplitudes by applying a constrained sparse spike inversion algorithm. A 3D low frequency impedance model was estimated by cridging of impedance values, which are calculated from the well log data and then added to the inversion result to provide a full band or absolute acoustic impedance model. The results from the study showed that there is a good agreement between the model impedance and the in situ log derived impedance across the E1000 reservoir. Also, the detailed acoustic impedance volume was key in assessing lateral variability and extent of reservoir and aided validation of seismic interpretation. So, the estimated porosity cube was analyzed for agreement with measured porosities at well locations. So, uh, the figure on the left shows porosity section through these different reservoirs. And the figure on the right shows inclined section of porosity volume at intersection with well K10. And then <clears throat> the result shows both qualitative and quantitative match with measured porosity at E1000. So based on these uh, figures, a zoom section of porosity volume at E1000 reservoir shows great match at wells K10 and K2. However, we also observe a mismatch at well K1 due to the poor quality of input petrophysical log. So this can be seen in this right figure. So uh, otherwise, the, the, the left figure shown below uh, is a porosity map of E1000 reservoirs which shows key wells such as K10, K1, and K2. Uh, next, the maps and the volumes generated from the seismic data could suffer from vertical resolution issues, which are in tens of meters. Therefore, seismically derived porosity maps have the effect of averaging vertically, which reduce variations in porosity that may be significant at reservoir characterization scale. For reservoir simulation work, where finer vertical details are required, it is perhaps better handled through simulation or stochastic techniques based upon residual distribution. <clears throat> uh, despite vertical resolution limitations, seismic inversion provides powerful information for predicting lateral variations in reservoir quality, which is not accessible through well data. And then the reservoir development was then assessed using the maps and sections of relative impedance volume. The inversion reveals the objective set E1000, which is well developed with variable thickness and quality. As we can see from this table, you can see the, the each of the wells with its low log derived porosity and the model porosity. And then this data, this information, will then be plotted into uh, this uh, graph, which, which shows the measured versus the model porosity of the wells. Thank you, Ferdinand, for very bombastic discussion. 
Now we are at the end of the presentation. As a conclusion, seismic inversion produces better estimation of reservoir properties such as porosity, permeability, and so on from seismic data. Next, average wavelet improves better quality of extracted wavelet with the risk of reduced accuracy on derived acoustic impedance and shape impedance in the case of specially varying wavelet. Then, the seismic inverted impedance is estimated from seismic mesh, seismic mesh the well impedance, which is more than 90% correlation, and the evasion process was validated through blind well testing. In addition, low frequency is the most critical to low properties, especially during seismic inversion, as it leads to fluid porosity and other reservoir properties determination that is required to make drilling decision. Last and foremost is the constraint that imposed during seismic inversion or deconvolution in seismic data processing describe how the impedance could vary laterally away from the wells. So that's all from me and for this presentation. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Have a good day and thank you. I love you all.